What's going on here? Matthew LeCroy is grabbing third baseman Danny Brito. I don't know if he got dizzy or something. Oh my goodness. Daniel Brito is now being laid down on the ground. I was at home um, with a friend. I was watching the game live. And then I saw it happen. I didn't know what to do. I was driving crazy. I started texting all of the friends I knew. But obviously they were all in the field, so no one was replying. I didn't know what had happened. I didn't know if he was okay or not, but I just started driving. So Daniel arrived to us and we took him for a CAT scan, which demonstrated a right frontal uh, hemorrhage or brain bleed and um, an additional uh, imaging study called the CT angiogram showed that the bleed was likely due to an abnormal tangle of vessels called an arteriovenous malformation, or AVM. It is a tangle of blood vessels that is thought to be um, originated at birth. They are not normal blood vessels. That's why it's called a malformation. So they tend to be weak, and as a result, over time, they can rupture. So Daniel, um, as a result of his bleed, um, was unconscious. We needed to very quickly remove the pressure from his brain. We did not go after the tangle of vessels. We didn't have a full uh, anatomic picture of, of how that was connected to the rest of his circulatory system, but there was plenty of blood that we could get out to relieve the pressure. The skull is a closed box. There's no extra room in there. It's brain and spinal fluid. So when someone has bleeding in their brain, that adds extra volume to a closed box, which drives the pressure up very, very high, very quickly. Once we were through that, um, we took him for two definitive procedures. The first one was to uh, put a substance into the AVM to slow the blood flow down. And then the next day, we took him for the definitive procedure to actually go back in take out the tangle of vessels in its entirety. Daniel required a medically induced coma uh, for two reasons. The first was because of the pressure in the brain, but even more important than that in his particular case was the lung inflammation. And because of that, um, we had to sedate him very deeply. We had to paralyze him. So give him medications so his muscles could not work on their own. Use very specific settings on the ventilator in order to help push the oxygen into his blood and then give him other medications to help open up the vessels in his lungs to get more oxygen into the blood. I never knew he was gonna be all right because whenever he started to wake up, his left side was paralyzed. His memory was off. He couldn't even remember the date. He remembered who I was, but for example, I asked him, do you remember how we got engaged? And he's like, were we engaged? <laughs> right now I laugh, but at that point I couldn't stop crying. Daniel's case is fortuitous in a sense. He was right here in Rochester, and he was able to be picked up by an ambulance and taken within minutes to Strong. We have all of the nurses, all of the surgical techs, the angiography techs, all of the folks in the ER, all of the folks in rehab, all of the physical and occupational and speech therapists. It's a whole team that provides a continuum of care, and all of them, they work tirelessly. I would guess that there was at least 100 people involved in Daniel's care, maybe more. The nurses were amazing. They all took care of Daniel. They took care of me when I needed it. All the nurses and the staff became basically like family again. I'm gonna be honest, I never expected for him to be as good as he is right now. The fact that he's basically back to normal, like nothing happened, is crazy. He says he feels like he's 90%. I feel like he's 100%, I don't see the difference. Not everybody can do the level of rehab that Daniel has been required to do to get back to where he is. But I had a sneaking suspicion as a professional ball player that he could do it and that we should give him every opportunity. Mm -hmm.